what's up you guys and as always welcome back to another smogan tier change for july now this tier is actually quite significant because we have of course pokemon home introduced which heavily affected usage and i think they were like out for two weeks and in contrast to that a lot of moves was introduced that created new synergies and that's a whole made a whole plethora of other mods more viable or less viable depending on the matchup and as a whole their uses are pretty much based on that and i want to go over the rises first we'll go over the drops and uh, should go without saying really but the mods introduced from home that has been dropping i only going to mention them briefly but i believe that they have yet to be really defined so i mean two weeks of meta really doesn't cover a whole lot and uh, the thing same thing goes with rises but there are clearly mods here that are more effective than ever and for different reasons first and foremost the chance they move from uubl to ou it was banned from uu directly because of its high viability and it will always be relevant chances of big sponge and super annoying very good supportive and now with teleport it is actually quite frustrating to be dealing with the other one is pelipper going from uu to ou i was surprised that Drizzle in itself was never banned from uu but uh, you know nonetheless um rain is always good and there are new posts introduced with rain as a flick turn which a great move was introduced together with stuff like Brascuda making rain which already was viable more viable short drag wish is gone and the nerve for the, the niche with that is kind of not fulfilled but as a whole pillipper is always going to be good no matter what and has a lot to do with the drizzle rillaboom i really can't say much more than you know it's gets redefined with the grassy line it's it's a pokemon that is right now faces hidden ability and a move that does allow it to get a priority it is one of the best grass types that ever, ever has been. There is nothing like it, and uh, it's very impressive. That's really all I can say. Uh, Brass Cuda moving for RU to or RUBL to UU, same thing with Indeedee. Uh, Brass Cuda got a flip print, uh, pretty much got a proper pivot, which makes it really good in its own right with a choice banded set, but also still as a rain sweeper, it is really frustrating. Getting something like priority or I mean um, a pivot option. Um, helps it out for a matchup that could be actually forcing it out to get so you get the momentum anyway indeed you got a lot better with uh, and uh, expanding force doubling power with psychic uh, in terrain <laughs> i mean come on it's ridiculous how strong that move is you figure with a nerf actually terrains for this generation that they wouldn't do something like this to make this terrain even stronger than ever i really can't wait to see lily introduced i mean then <laughs> What's the point of introducing them with a move like that? That's gonna be so hard to be dealing with, and indeed, it represents the best of that. Um, we have Copper Rush, Snorlax, and Steelix uh, moving from RU to UU. I really couldn't tell you why. I do believe, I guess, the meta allows them to be more viable in that area. But other than that, like, if they're better than like, in a tier that is above it and you know more power to it and only thing i could see being a thing is a boat cover and more i think steelix actually deals somewhat well with scyther which i heard is a very very hard pokemon there hence why scyther is in uu and, i mean what else can i say it is it is great it really is the new dual or wing no dual wing beach i think it's called is you know a, a move that gets it you know basically like a braver without recall and consider the speed here and actually really high bulk it does pressure a lot of teams naturally 105 in speed yeah it's a it's an elite speed here for that for that tier so uh, scyther is magnificent you, you figure scissor be the best thing coming out of this but no scyther just damn really good um indeed a female and porygon 2 to RU nothing to it same thing with um magneton going from publ to ru S trapping steel types is always going to be relevant and magneton represents just that um it's probably going to move even higher now it has a few things going against it no hidden power fire means that steelix do shake it but magneton is always going to be good because of the both trapping and accessibility together with analytics and it's speed enough to pack and choice cuff and um also Pink Churchin go into RU from CUBL. Yeah, you know, that rising. That new electric move, I can't remember the name. Then some people rising, bolts, stuff like that. Double the power is drain. Pink Churchin doesn't necessarily have that high of a special attack, but getting the double the power. 
it's wonderful it's so God and strong that I love it. Same thing here with both the um, Gore guys and Goldorf moving up to an NU. The new move in Poltergeist really give these guys a few favors, giving them a proper high power stab move. It wouldn't surprise me to see something like Dusk Noir moving into the array of actually being locked into NU because of that move. Like, Ghost is always going to be spammable, and now we have a high power base move that actually has a lot of giving a lot of teams trouble. Yeah, it's it's making them really good. I couldn't say why Berescue just moved up, but it's always tough to deal dealing with. And Hitman Lee got the triple axial ice moves, boost, technician boost, basically giving it a V create of an ice boob, making the technician hit him on top. For the first time ever, really, a defensive hit him on top is now relevant. It's never really been that. Like, even from this introduction generation, wasn't that impressive. And it's always been good defensive spinner would intimidate. But now, it is actually offensively viable. Never thought I see it. But then you got to the lesser or the middle stage really boom. Um stuff with T. Anyway, you know, grassy slide, it actually I think it's 85 base attack, something like that. So it's actually strong enough. So it's really good. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, and then we see both Sea King and uh, Steel Valley rock moving up from CU to PU. Couldn't tell you why. And uh, then we got the um, middle cup of Mozin Kadabra. Uh, Raboot and Togekiss moving up. Um, they're good in their own rights, and if they're viable in PU, it's because they're so powerful and there really is nothing to it. And the same thing here is with Little Cup Ubers to PU with a Tangela. I have no idea what that thing is doing, but I know Tangela is a menace and a very tough model to be dealing with. Seeing that viable in PU always has been, it was really viable even in NU in previous generation. So seeing it move. To PU is kind of cool, I guess. I mean, we haven't seen anything really from Tangrove that is substantial, but Tangela is quite annoying. And um, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of surprised it was a little cut from the get go because, you know, Tangela clearly is a really, really good Evai like Pokemon. And uh, now I have the drops. The first one, Gengar and Ninetales and Primarina moving from OU to UBL. Not mattering really, they're still locked to only be used in OU, it can't move down to UBL, but definitely aren't used enough for the OU meta to be able to say that, but they're banned or blacklisted from the UU tiers and are well count. Now to the OU to UU. There are a few Pokemons here, and I can see a plethora of them never staying. Uh, so, first and foremost, AG Slash is a Pokemon that might actually be losing momentum because of mods like the Volcaro. Now, it clearly forces that Pokemon out, but it's not gonna stay there. It's still very good and uh, it's still very flexible, so there is no way it's staying. And other mon are Cloyster. Cloyster is also going to be good in OU, but seeing it move down to UU, I don't. I believe it stays there. Um, basically, like its main viability are nerfed now with new Pokémon introduced, and Cloyster has always been for me a UU Pokémon no matter what. So it's going to stay there. And Conkludor is going to be absolutely banned. <laughs> Monster of Pokemon. Uh, no idea why it got moved so low. I can only assume it has a lot to do with the good fighting types introduced. And, um, you know, Trachyon for one might be filling a role there that uh, simply Conkeldor isn't forced to do. But quite frankly, Conkeldor is in its own right a very, very scary Pokemon of all its speed at. Uh, Grimmsnarl, not gonna stay. Hatterini, not gonna stay. Hirashi, not gonna stay. Uh, Hurem, I don't know, could be actually be forced to be going down there. Uh, Mimikyu, not gonna stay. <laughs> Scalopede, not gonna stay. Seismitoad, finally dropping. Um, clearly its viability was based on Dracovish, there's really nothing to it. Um, I think it's ignorant to not say that it is based on that, but seeing it move down might actually be good because it's is niche, I guess we call it, is kind of good, and to get it with Pelipper now in, of course, now in OU, but it would have created a really good Swift Swim core, I guess as Oldings Lock to OU, so I guess that's where we find him again, but, yeah, I don't know, um, I guess the usage just wasn't what it is, and same thing here with Skarmory, it's not gonna stay, uh, two weeks of meta really didn't help it to be more viable, come on, it's absolutely better than Covenite, and, um, wouldn't surprise me uh, to see it be moved up for whatever reason alone. Um, Talonflame, I don't know how well dual wing beats are on Talonflame, but I can say this, it's always going to have a priority with that, as uh, the Gale Wing was all been activated with heavy, but, uh, heavy, du heavy duty boots, Jesus. Um, 
so I can only assume it to be moving up because of that viability, but it could also be seen in UU because it isn't that powerful. Trachyon to UU. Now it was UU in Eurasian 7. The thing that I see it is it's not. Look, it is not the most threatening Pokemon out there, but at the same time, it is absolutely too much for UU to handle. So I think it's actually going to absolutely going to get banned. Uh, then went to Rantar, which. We fought so long to save this Apex Pursuit Trapper. Like we debated two weeks ago or two months ago, and had a like a really broad beat down how Pokemon ruins Ranator, and now it finally fell out. And all I can say is, God damn it! Really, God damn it! Such a good Pokemon. Really, really sad to see that one go. Um, now we have pretty much. OU Pokemon moving down to RU. I couldn't tell you anything about these, but we see Buffaloon, we see a Lone Link Segator, Lurantis, Luxray, Politoed, which now that I think about it, we have actually like Drizzler in RU. That could be interesting. Um, <laughs> and then we have a Lone Link Sandslash, which should be actually be kind of good this generation, but I guess it has finest footing just yet. However, with consider the droppings, it could actually be a Pokemon combined with Vanillax because it actually was moved down to NU. So that is a core that could be very, very likely to happen. That was a middle tank to NU. Couldn't tell you anything about that either. Then OU to PU. The only like real change here besides Pokemon you s that is on the screen is that we actually see uh, Shuckle moving from OU to PU. It was a Pokemon that moved up previous generation and now fell down to PU. I couldn't tell you what happened in between because that set that was used for Metal Herb, Stealth Rock, Sick Web. Let's see. Because Encore and Final Gambit was wonderful. Very good Viper Offensive teams. Just to get fast leadway and then try to sweep. But yeah, really couldn't tell you guys why. Uh, Barbarical move from UU to RUBL. Look, um, if. You use keeping Grimmsnarl, Barbarical is going to be the first Pokemon to enter that trap because Barbarical and Grimmsnarl and get yeah, dual terrain. Shit, I was going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the fan, but no, it, Barbarical is still very, very good, and yeah, I don't believe its drop represents that. If anything, it now has the means to be more reliable than ever. As long as Grimmsnarl stays UU, Barbarical is going to be its number one partner because of that very good shell smash. Sure, well, Cloyster, but it's no Barbarical, I'll tell you that much. Um, now from UU to RU. Couldn't tell you why. Uh, couldn't tell you why any of these are dropping, or I guess Espeon, because it's not necessarily that viable anymore. But Mushomp, seeing it in RU is going to absolutely suck, but as long as Conkelder is UU, there's no reason of using anything but Conkelder in UU anyway. But Mushomp is still good, but not as good as Conkelder. Rebombi, one of the best stick wearers in the game. I mean, it's always going to be, for me, all your material for the teams it's a sign about, but the lower tier, the better. Um, it's clearly good in any tier because of its sticky web accessibility. Zato moving down, I feel the same thing there, like Zato is viable in every tier it is. It's definitely better this time in Espeon because of its broader move pool, and there's where I stand. Uh, from RU to NU, really aren't that big of a shift here, like we see Cromorant, which is... Uh, Kind of funny, very good defogger and you know, niche set. Uh, the CGI is still very good. Gallade, I didn't even know what it was, are you? But hey, there it is. Seven Deluxe Moon to NU is gonna be interesting. It's still like very good. <laughs> NU to PU. Here's what I feel there's nothing to it because all these Pokemon that are here are good in NU also. So seeing them being moved down, I couldn't tell you why that is because Bolt Hound, really good. Dreadnought, really good. Um, Hitmon Top, I was going to say, but Hitmon Chan is really good. Ninjask, awesome. Orbeetle, awesome. Unvisited, very good in NU. So yeah, like I said, I couldn't tell you why they're dropping, but they're dropping. And PU to CU, couldn't tell you anything about these ones at all, really. Um, I guess. I'm surprised that Lodicolo is, is defined to be so bad, because I don't think it is that, but besides that, like, that's all I can fill out. Now, so what are major changes here? Well, the UU is now broader than ever, I think that is the, like the main take, I think the UU console has a lot of things to kind of debate, uh, and, you know, there is one thing that really is worth taking away here is that... <sighs> With every type of DLC now, it's going to be not only more mods introduced, but also potentially new moves that are meta-defining. So it's good to know that no matter what happens, 
the game itself could be redefined just by these DLCs. Rillaboom shifted its momentum to be one of the most like one of the best Pokemon ever introduced as a starter and like the days before it we have Libero um, uh, Cinderace I was gonna say that actually um, redefined a meta from the get-go but no Rillaboom to the K because of his priority because he got something really unique and diverse and I feel that's something that's probably gonna get used to that the, the meta is hopefully not as stagnant as we thought it would be because yeah sure the Pokemon is restricted but the move pools of these Pokemon are broader than they ever have been and that's where I take down from this so with that said I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, hopefully this episode joins also very closely to the Wi-Fi Bell upload from today so double upload Ray how about that um, so that's it as always thank you for watching have a great day take care one bye